Cultural hearths are the original sources of culture. Yet many cultures have spread far beyond their hearths. The spreading of information, ideas, behaviors, and other aspects of culture over wider areas is known as diffusion. The two major forms of cultural diffusion come through cultural exchanges, both by migration and by more indirect means. One main type of diffusion is relocation diffusion, the spread of a cultural trait by people who migrate and carry their cultural traits with them. A small scale example is the spread of pizza, which Italian immigrants brought to the United States in the late 19th century. A larger scale example is the spread of European culture around the world starting in the 1500s. At times, the areas where migrants settle continue a trait after it has lost its influence in its hearth. The people in the modern world who pronounce English most like Shakespeare live not in New England, but in Appalachia. Disco music evolved in the United States in the 1970s, but remained popular in Egypt long after it faded in the United States. The spread of cultural traits through direct or indirect exchange without migration is called expansion diffusion, and it occurs in many different ways. Contagious diffusion occurs when a cultural trait spreads continuously outward from its hearth through contact among people. For example, the hearth for blues music is the southern United States. As musicians outside the hearth heard the music, they began to play it themselves. Blues slowly spread northward and eventually reached major cities such as St. Louis, Chicago, and New York. Hierarchical diffusion is the spread of culture outward from the most interconnected places or from centers of wealth and importance. Cultural traits spread first from one important person, city, or powerful class to another important person, city, or social class. Eventually, the trait could be shared with other people, smaller cities, social classes, or less developed countries. Unlike contagious diffusion, hierarchical diffusion may skip some places while moving on to others. Most popular culture, such as music, fashion, and fads, follows the hierarchical diffusion path. Cell phone technology demonstrates how hierarchical diffusion works. When cellular phones first appeared on the market in the 1980s, they were expensive and were most commonly owned by wealthy people in large cities and more developed countries. As cell phone networks grew and cell phones became mass produced, they eventually spread to a wider market. Today, cell phones have diffused throughout the world. At times, a trait diffuses from a lower class to a higher class in a process called reverse hierarchical diffusion. For example, in the United States in the 1940s through the 1960s, people commonly considered tattoos to be a symbol of low social status. Usually among, tattoos were usually associated with three types of places, seaport towns among dock workers and sailors, military bases, and prisons. Since the 1970s, the custom of getting tattoos has diffused through many segments of society and geographic areas. Some reverse hierarchical diffusion goes from small rural communities to larger urban areas. Walmart stores, for example, diffused from rural Arkansas to nearly every city in the United States. Stimulus diffusion occurs when people in a culture adopt an underlying idea or process from another culture, but modify it because they reject one trait of it. For example, Hindus in India adopted the practice of eating fast food, but they rejected eating beef because doing so would violate their Hindu beliefs. So they adopted, adapted the custom by making vegetarian and other non-beef types of burgers. Five centuries ago, Europeans adopted the use of lightweight, beautifully decorated porcelain dishes that they obtained from China, but they rejected the high cost of importing the dishes. So when people in Germany found deposits of the right type of clay to make their own porcelain, they modified the process of obtaining porcelain by making it in Europe. Diffusion describes the way cultures spread. As they spread, they come into contact with other cultures. The interaction of cultures is one of the driving forces in human history, and it can have several types of results. Often, an ethnic or immigrant group moving to a new area adopts the values and practices of the larger group that has received them, while still maintaining major elements of their own culture. This is called acculturation. For example, 
In the 1880s, the Syndergaard family migrated from Denmark to the United States, settling in a Danish enclave in Iowa. The mother and father gave most of their ten children common Danish names, such as Inger and Niles. They commonly ate Danish foods, including spherical pancakes called abelskiver. Within three generations, their descendants still ate abelskiver, but they had names common in U.S. culture, such as Susan, Jim, and Dave. Unlike acculturation, assimilation happens when an ethnic group can no longer be distinguished from the receiving group. This often occurs as ethnic groups become more affluent and leave their ethnic areas. Complete assimilation rarely happens, though. Often the one trait that is retained the longest is religion. For example, the grandchildren of immigrants from India might no longer speak Hindi or other Indian languages or eat traditional Indian cuisine daily, but they might still practice their Hindu faith. Often the third and fourth generations of an ethnic group display a resurgence in ethnic pride by organizing festivals, learning the ethnic language, and revitalizing ethnic neighborhoods. Without full assimilation, most receiving societies, such as the United States, are characterized by multiculturalism, the coexistence of several cultures in one society, with the ideal of all cultures being valued and worthy of study. A major idea of multiculturalism is that the interaction of cultures enriches the lives of all. However, coexistence of cultures can also bring conflicts, as people and groups with different values, beliefs, and customs often clash. Minority groups often face prejudice and discrimination. Refugees fleeing the civil war that began in Syria in 2011 who hoped to settle in the United States often faced opposition from Americans who feared that some refugees would be terrorists. In some cases, the conflict between two cultures becomes harsh. Nativist or anti-immigrant attitudes may form among the cultural majority, sometimes bringing violence or government actions against the immigrant or minority group. Often, nativist attitudes are directed toward one particular group, such as opposition in the United States to Roman Catholic immigrants in the 1800s and early 1900s. Other times, nativism reflects a general dislike of people from other countries, or what we call xenophobia.